Iriminage is one of Aikido's basic techniques, yet it differs from the others in one interesting way. The integrity of the technique is maintained by controlling Uke's body without using his hands or arms for the throw. Instead, you must completely break his balance, while of course maintaining yours. You must become the pin in the pinwheel, the vacuum in the vortex. To idimi is to put your body into shikaku, which literally means dead angle, or the space we call the blind spot behind the attacker. Nage then must take the attacker's shoulder down to the ground, completely breaking his balance. At this point, the technique may be over, but if the attacker recovers and continues, Nagi must already be in position to again control the attacker. For everyday training, students should practice kata style, that is, repeatedly executing the basic forms of iriminage while responding to basic attacks, as in the following examples. The purpose of this type of training is to develop an understanding of the relationship between nage and uke based on the dynamics of timing, movement, and balance. Let's watch Basic Iriminage from Basic Attacks.
Remember to include Suwadi Waza and Hanmi Handachi, which are excellent aids to center development. With weapons, the stakes are naturally higher, and Nage must immediately and incontestably interrupt the attacker's balance and concentration. First control the attacker, then control the weapon. A swift and unexpected atemi often gives Nage the advantage. The attacker momentarily forgets his intent as he experiences the distraction or the pain. Sometimes your only option is to eat me with a convincing atemi to the face. A similar eat me can be used against a kick and a punch. For Iriminage, it is helpful to isolate the footwork. You can start by practicing 180 degree turns. The usual inclination is to pivot on the balls of your feet, and this works well. However, you should also experiment with the heel to see what works best for you in different circumstances. Next, add a partner and work on maintaining your center and stability. Full 360 degree turns are used in Iriminage and can be accomplished in two ways. In this version, perform the 180 degree turn and then swing your front foot around to the back. Start with knees slightly bent. Then experiment with deeper knee bends, working all the while to maintain your balance. Progress to very deep knee bends, which are sometimes needed in certain situations. Next, add a partner and concentrate on being the center of the spiral. At this point in the training, Uke should cooperatively follow Nage's lead.
and this version, perform the 180 degree turn. And then move your back leg to the front to complete the full 360 degrees. The circumstances of the attack will determine whether you use the footwork of version 1 or of version 2. Let's watch. It is helpful to practice consecutive pivots and turns until you gain confidence in your ability to move from center and to maintain your balance. Let's watch a few examples of Ukemi for Idiminage. Ukemi, the art of saving yourself, ranges from simple low rolls to pounding breakfalls to breath-catching flights. You can learn to protect yourself by practicing a variety of moves. The classic backfall is most commonly used with regular Idiminage practice. It is important to tuck your inside leg, the one nearest Nage, in order to avoid possible injury to your knee or ankle. In some instances, there is no time to tuck your leg. You must simply go down flat. Breakfall ukemi is needed when the iriminage contains a koshinage or kotegaishi element. Though not often used in the dojo, this ukemi protects uke's back and head and might be necessary in an undesirable environment such as a rock or debris strewn area. With a tamey, the only place to go is down and fast. This is a basic kata for Iriminage and is a good way for beginners to get started. This form should be practiced repeatedly 
in order to create a solid foundation. When working in the kata, nage and uke should cooperate and try to understand the movements unique to each role. With a basic kata, uke will be taken down by nage, and uke therefore needs to know how to recover his balance. Remember that nage will be controlling uke's neck and shoulder at this time. By going down on one of both hands, uke can prevent a total loss of balance, implementing a save and get back up to continue practicing the technique. Notice the knee and leg work. Uke must bend one or both knees and sweep his legs around quickly in order to maintain body alignment and to stand up. This should be practiced from both the left and right sides. For classic Iribinage, enter and secure Uke's head to your shoulder, placing your fingers just under his ear or on the carotid pressure point. Then pivot, bringing Uke with you, and roll your arm and shoulder forward while stepping through for the throw. You should always be in the center, with Uke moving around you. Although the head-to-shoulder form is possibly the most commonly practiced, Nage can use any part of his arm or hand to control Uke. The important point here is that Uke's neck should be twisted and his head turned to the side, thereby unbalancing him and diminishing his power. Notice the left hand controlling Uke's neck. Here we have two more options. Idimi, or entering, is a challenging art in itself. By practicing kata many times over, you may eventually discover the dynamics that create your opening. However, if you focus only on the hand movements themselves and fail to explore the center power behind them, Edemi will always be difficult. The following are some examples of basic kata with which to begin. Practice cooperatively at first, then gradually incorporate resistance training to help develop center. Uke offers Nage a firm grip, which Nage uses to turn Uke's body and then enters. Nagi frees her hands and takes control by going through Uke's grip at its weakest point.
Nage moves his hand to the outside of Uke's grip. Here, Nage cuts up between Uke's hands to break the grip. These escapes from Kosadori are nearly identical to ones used with Katate Ryo Tedori. Nage secures Uke's hand to his shoulder, using it to roll and twist Uke's arm. Nage catches Uke's attack and twists his arm, creating space for entering. Nage should move offline just before impact and enter closely behind Uke. Here Nage crosses his arms to catch Uke's punch, then uses Nikyo to continue the technique. Nage lowers her body and steps back with an atami, moving behind Uke. Nage turns into Uke with an atami and uses his elbow to turn his body. Nage raises his arms, lowers his body, and steps out and then behind Uke, controlling Uke's right arm. Nage performs the same movement as before, this time controlling Uke's left arm. As with Tsuki, Nagi moves offline and in at the last possible moment.
Nagi uses Uke's elbow to twist and unbalance Uke. Nage blocks the Yoko Menuchi and twists Uke's arm, breaking his balance, thus creating space to move in behind. Nage again blocks the strike, and this time uses Uke's arm to redirect him, making space to enter. With some techniques, individuals may realize a slight advantage or disadvantage due to physical stature. With Iriminage, a person faced with a tall uke must make adjustments for the difference in height. Here, Nage enters deeply, using uke's waist to break his balance. When Nage is the taller of the two, this point is not quite so critical. In general, with Iriminage and other techniques, a primary objective of Nage should be to take a tall Uke down as far as possible, putting Uke at a distinct disadvantage. Freestyle moves beyond the predictable patterns of kata and into the realm of unplanned responses. It is when Nagi and his attacker intuitively react to speed, distance, timing, size, and strength. It is when communication occurs between centers, when negotiations are about balance. It is when roles can be reversed in a heartbeat. It is when you create your own Aikido. Freestyle is experiential. So let's just watch for a while.
Break balance. Keep moving. Discover center. Connect. Relax. Bend your knees. Turn. Enter. All these day-to-day -day admonishments of kata training work their way into our subconscious, cementing in our bodies the foundation that will enable us to eventually develop center. Techniques such as Irimanage give us the opportunity to explore natural relationships, to deepen our understanding, and to ultimately discover our potential. from various weapons arts, including the art of the Sarai sword. Aikido's founder, Morihei Uejiba Osate, who lived from 1883 to 1969, studied many weapon systems and incorporated their insight into the art that he developed. Tsuji Satome-sensei is a direct student of Osate. Born in Japan in 1937, Satome-sensei began his study of Aikido at the age 19. In 1960, he entered Aikikai Honbu Dojo, headquarters of Aikido Central Organization, as an uchishi, or live-in super, a position that he held for 15 years. While O-sensei rarely, if ever, offered systematic training in sword technique, he did often form spontaneous demonstrations of his sword's skills. Several of his students, including Tsutomi sensei have attempted to systematize what they took to be the basic lessons of those demonstrations. Tomei sensei also trained under O sensei's son, Kisumaro Ueshiba sensei, Aikido's present doshi. Like doshu, Tomei sensei has stated that Aikido's basic purpose is to help people live better, to make their spirits blossom, and so to improve the world. Tomei sensei often traveled with O sensei and served as his uchi in demonstration. For about six years after the founder's death, Tomei sensei stayed on as an instructor at Hombu Dojo. In 1975, he moved to the United States. In the late 70s, he demonstrated for the United Nations peacekeeping forces and for the delegates to the United Nations.
once they establish an Aikido organization, Aikido Schools of Ueshima, which is recognized by Aikai from Kubota. For Sao Tome Sensei, Aikido is a Budo, and this means that its aim is nothing less than the education of human instinct. On this view, the purpose of Aikido is not to prepare us for hurting others, or even for defending ourselves, but to lead us beyond petty selfishness to a state of noble concern, respect, and compassion. In 1994, at the celebration of Sao Tome Sensei's 40th year in Aikido, he was presented with a letter from President Bill Clinton. In the letter, President Clinton commends Saotome Sensei for a lifetime devoted to promoting nobility of spirit and civility of conduct. In a proper grip, the left hand rests at the base of the hilt. There is the space of the width of one fist, and the right hand rests just behind the handguard of the suit. Both hands are run inward. Gripping the sword from underneath is a mistake, since it requires too much of the right thumb. In a proper grip, both hands are wrung inward and placed on the handle from the top. Accustomed to training with wooden swords, some Aikidoka place their right hands too far up on the sword or extend their index fingers down the blade. A real sword scuba would preserve this grip, as of course would lay sharpness. When there is a space between the tsuba and the right hand, the sword could 